I will welcome you all to the module number 10 and this is um, this module is about uh, emotional intelligence. So, it is uh, first lecture of module 10 and overall it is lecture number 23. So, today we will be talking about the introduction of the concept of emotional intelligence. So, it will be kind of overall uh, discussing about the introductory concepts overall overview of the concept of the emotional intelligence. So, in the last lecture uh, we were talking about uh, the concept of mindfulness. In fact, the last module was about the concept of emotion regulation particularly uh, we are talking about specific strategies for adaptive emotion regulation. In that context last lecture was about mindfulness as a uh, strategy uh, adaptive strategy uh, uh, um, is, is, is a kind of strategy uh, which leads to adaptive emotion regulation. So, we have discussed various concepts like you know uh, we introduced the concept of mindfulness, so we also discussed its roots and various components, we also discussed uh, various th therapeutic effects of mindfulness, how it impacts uh, the various aspects of human behavior and mental aspects. And we also discussed how we can deal with thought processes and emotions with the use of mindfulness in a more productive way, uh, more adaptive way and uh, more specific uh, research findings related to emotion regulation and mindfulness have also been discussed. And at the end we discussed some of the practical aspects in terms of practicing mindfulness. So, these are some of the things that we have discussed in the last lecture. Today it is the new, new module and obviously the, in this module the uh, the whole approach is now uh, will be on discussing the concept of emotional intelligence. In fact, uh, the upcoming modules are about the concept of emotional intelligence. So, we will be kind of discussing different aspects of emotional intelligence how and it is basically theoretical as well as its applied aspects. So, today's lecture is more of introduction and uh, we will be talking about the concept of uh, emotional intelligence and uh, kind of kind of compare it with cognitive intelligence. We will be also giving you some brief history of emotional intelligence and then we will be talking about why it is so important to understand emotional intelligence, why it matters and we will be discussing at the end the, the different models of emotional intelligence. So, let us start today's lecture. So, the concept of emotional intelligence is, uh, is somehow associated with that people can be intelligent about their emotions. Now, this itself sometimes looks like a paradoxical concept because people generally think when we are emotionally overpowered by emotions, we are not behaving rationally or intelligently. Uh, but the research shows uh, both the aspects could be there in a sense that one can uh, kind of different aspects of emotions in terms of expression, understanding, regulation, one can be intelligent about it. So, we will be trying to understand all these concepts uh, in today's lecture. So, as we all know emotion is a very powerful force and it drives motivators everything all the motivation and whatever drives us and reaching goal and everything is associated with emotions. Many time emotions can lead us astray and many time emotions can also guide us in the proper direction. Now, despite our efforts to be logical rational all the time, but emotions still play a very important role uh, in our uh, in our perception, in our thinking, in our reasoning and in our decision making. We have already discussed in the modules where we have discussed how emotion impacts thought processes and uh, decision making very detailed way we have understood that uh, you know emotion impacts every aspects of cognition. So, we cannot kind of separate emotions uh, from the cognitions emotions will impact our cognition. So, many people view emotion as kind of as we have already said as a kind of interference or opposite to rational decision making and reasoning. Uh, regarding intellect as a superior uh, generally they regard intellect or is a superior thing than emotions uh, which uh, may not be true in many context. Uh, however, emotional intelligence recognizes that you know that intellect and emotions are equally important and they are kind of inter uh, you know twinned with each other kind of one impacts the other and that is why both can come together and uh, that is where the concept of emotional intelligence comes into the play. So, the emotional intelligence encompasses a set of skills, it encompasses a set of skills that determine how we perceive, understand, use and manage our own and others emotion. So, it is about understanding, perceiving, regulating emotions within us as well as with the other people also. So, you have kind of understanding not only about your own emotions and other thing, you also have understanding and perceptions and 
uh, about the other people also. So, we will be talking about the different models so that everything will become much more clear. So, it is a very uh, important factor in personal and professional relationship and uh, success also, uh, because uh, how you deal with emotion plays very important as aspects in the quality of our life because it is the emotion that determines everything whether your life is ex in terms of experiential ways whether your life is full of happiness or full of sorrows a lot of things actually it is this it's all the emotional flavor of our life that determines the quality of life so if you can be intelligent with our emotions then uh, obviously the it will impact the quality of our life in a very 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 significant ways so, the concept of emotional intelligence, this term was first you know, proposed in 1990 by Selovi and Mayer. They introduced this concept of emotional intelligence. This term was first came into existence and given by Selovi and Mayer in 1990, uh, where they kind of combine cognitive and affective components is that is intellectual as well as the emotional part combined of the mind. They combine together and that said they kind of combine them and they try to see uh, and uh, basically propose this idea of emotional intelligence. Uh, they defined it very specifically uh, as the ability to monitor one's own and others feeling and emotions. So, one is about monitoring to discriminate among them. So, another is the discrimination of emotion. So, there are diverse emotion we experience your ability to discriminate them. Uh, and use this information to guide one's thinking and action and how do you use this information of emotions whatever you understand about emotion and use those information to guide your thinking processes and your actions. So, your ab ability in that direction reflects your emotional intelligence according to uh, uh, Mayer and Selovi. So, this is one of the definition they gave Baron another person uh, who also researcher he who also gave uh, this uh, also talked about emotional intelligence uh, and gave a much broader definition than the Mayer and Selovi's definition and according to Baron uh, the concept uh, he included the many more concepts such as adaptive capacities and abilities to control impulses, cope with the stresses as well as intrapersonal and interpersonal intelligence. So, the, defini uh, the Baron definition is much more broader than Mayer and Selobi they, because they included many more aspects than what Mayer and Selobi talked about. So, according to uh, the more precisely their definition includes emotional intelligence is an array of non-cognitive capabilities. So, it is uh, not about intellectual capabilities, non-cognitive capabilities, competencies and skills that influence one's ability to succeed in the coping with the environment. So, one is coping part. Uh, environmental demands and pressures. So, broadly defined, uh, defined emotional intelligence addresses the emotional, personal, social and survival dimensions of the intelligence. So, Baron also included the concept of coping with the different environmental demands and pressure also included in the concept of emotional intelligence. Uh, Baron has uh, worked extensively on developing a comprehensive inventory for assessing emotional intelligence uh, in 1980s. Uh, <coughs> so, we will be talking about that also little later. So, while uh, Selovi and Mayer uh, originally introduced the concept of emotional intelligence in 1990, it was not until 1995 that Goldman published a book on this topic uh, that became a best seller book and uh, because of this book. So, this Daniel Goldman uh, kind of popularized this whole concept of emotional intelligence through his book. The name of the book is Emotional Intelligence, Why It Can Matter More Than IQ. Uh, this is the name of the book and uh, with the publication of this book, this became a best seller book and uh, this whole concept of emotional intelligence became much more popular in the public domain and uh, mm, then kind of this concept received much more research attention also. So, uh, so this is uh, how this concept became much more popular and obviously then obviously lot of research has gone into it. So, in this book, uh, Goldman introduced this idea of emotional intelligence, uh, which involves uh, various skills. He talked about emotional intelligence include various skills. So, we will be talking about his models also in detail like self-awareness, empathy, self-regulation, social skills and so on. Uh, the various idea, uh, various skills and abilities related to uh, emotional intelligence, which according to Goldman 
comes under emotional intelligence. So, we will be discussing his model also in detail. So, he defined emotional intelligence as the capacity for recognizing our own feelings and those of others. So, recognition of feelings once for, for oneself as well as others uh, for motivating and also for motivating ourselves and for managing emotions well in ourselves and in our relationships. So, these are the different concepts that uh, he introduced in the concept of uh, emotional intelligence. Uh, so, one, so it is very clear if you see the definitions of emotional intelligence, people, uh, the different researchers or theorists, uh, the core idea is almost similar, but they used uh, the different, you know, parameters or different skills and abilities in their definitions. So, based on what approach one takes, uh, the definition also keeps changing little bit. But core idea uh, still remains same is about you know some of the non-cognitive abilities that people uh, uh, that that people have in terms of their own emotions as well as you know others' emotion. Uh, so based on the perspective, there are different models that we'll be talking about. So uh, so still there is not like one perspective in emotional intelligence. There are different perspectives based on how they define it. So, with this brief introduction, uh, let us also see some of the signs of people with high emotional intelligence. It is very clear that if you, if you see people around us, the, some people are very intelligent with their emotion in sense, uh, their behavior reflects certain uh, intelligence in terms of how they express emotion, how they regulate emotion and so on. So, there are some of the signs which could uh, which are possibly indicators of high emotional intelligence. Uh, some of these are mentioned here. Uh, so, some individuals may possess exceptional abilities in recognizing and regulating emotions, which is basically uh, reflects emotional intelligence. They possess variety of emotional intelligence skills such as the capacity to acknowledge and comprehend their emotions while being able to express them suitably. So, understanding your own emotions, what you are going through and express them suitably according to the context. Uh, they can handle a variety of emotions such as guilt, jealousy, disappointment during challenging circumstances without being overwhelmed. So, difficult emotions, dis some emotions which are very overwhelming, they are able to manage them uh, and uh, basically without getting too much of overwhelmed by it, so that it is not, it does not influence the functioning aspects. Uh, they also possess self-assurance and are willing to display empathy, compassion towards other. Such people are also more likely to uh, express compassion and empathy, understand others' perspective much better ways. Uh, these people also possess an acute sense of self-awareness and are perceptive towards their surroundings. So, there is a high sense of self-awareness, understanding about oneself and as well as, well as the environment. Uh, they can delegate appropriately and influence others without using manipulation or emotional blackmail. So, they can delegate ap appropriately and influence others without really kind of you know emotional blackmail or too much of manipulative strategies. You know. So, in a more healthy way, they can kind of influence other people. Uh, they handle anger in a reasonable manner and are not hesitant to stand up for their beliefs or express their emotions when hurt. So, that regulation part is very important, they are able to regulate destructive emotions such as anger and they also stand up for whatever they believe, wherever there is required to be firmness, they also can be firm. Uh, the, they also possess the ability to sense and handle the emotional needs of others. So, they can be also sensitive towards the emotional needs of the others, uh, they can because they have higher empathy and compassion and so on. So, this could be some of the possible signs which indicates higher emotional intelligence and we can clearly see some people are high on it and some people are low in it. So, that could be there could be individual differences. So, let us see uh, how this concept emotional intelligence is different from the cognitive intelligence that IQ concept that we talk about, uh, which is typically more intellectual uh, capabilities, how it is different from that. So, here are some of the differences. So, cognitive intelligence is basically ability to think, reason, solve problems, process information. So, most typically when we saw about cognitive intelligence or generally the intelligence in general sense that we talk about, it is about your processing ability, how you are able to think, process things, reasoning ability, logical analysis, critical analysis and so on. Uh, 
typically most of the academic situa situation schools and colleges basically they train your cognitive intelligence more the whole curriculum is designed for cognitive intelligence so it is more about those intellectual aspects to it emotional intelligence on the other hand its ability to recognize manage own as well as others emotion understanding emotions and so on it is more about in the emotional sphere how are you able to understand your emotions your self awareness and others emotions you know uh, understanding and influencing regulating emotions recognizing managing and those aspects are very important so this is more of kind of ability to handle emotional aspects of your life so that is about emotional intelligence cognitive intelligence more about your processing ability so cognitive intelligence also focuses on intellectual capacities like logical reasoning memory creativity critical thinking and so on uh, it fo emotional intelligence focuses on awareness empathy interpersonal skills ability to manage one's and others emotions so these are something that we have already discussed for example cognitive intelligence will be much more relevant in context where you are solving a complex mathematical problem so if there is a complex problem you are trying to solve then it is your cognitive intelligence will come into the play emotional intelligence will come into the play when you are let's say understanding and managing emotions during a conflict situations so when there is a conflict situation how you are able to manage yourself deal with other express yourself so their emotional intelligence will come into play so depending on the situation uh, both can express themselves in different situations cognitive intelligence is mostly measured by iq tests and most of this academic performance kind of reflects cognitive intelligence uh, emotional intelligence is measured by eq test so there are uh, just like iq test there are eq tests are available there are different self assessment and social skill assessment can reflect emotional intelligence so cognitive intelligence influences your academic professional success as well as performance in tasks that require analytical logical thinking emotional intelligence influences personal professional relationships leadership skills teamwork overall emotional well being on those fields emotional intelligence plays more more important role in the leadership because it is about managing people managing conflicts and so on so emotional intelligence can be very important in the leadership roles so in personal professional relationships relationship aspects emotional intelligence plays more important role in your relationships team work well being happiness and so on emotional intelligence can be very important and these skills nowadays in fact research shows are very important even in your professional success also because to maintain a uh, certain standard in certain aspects relationship aspects always comes into the play and emotional intelligence can play very important role in your professional success also where cognitive intelligence is more important but still emotional intelligence can determine the longevity in the kind of services and so on so we'll see some of the uh, findings there so uh, some of the a brief history let us see obviously some of the aspects we have already discussed but how this whole concept evolved Uh, the evolution of emotional intelligence is tied closely tied to the survival of early societies and reflected in the human brain itself so emotional intelligence was very important even in the prehistoric time when the people were trying to survive in the different context that was already there you know in terms of writing charles darwin kind of if you if, if you can see the uh, writings uh, of the charles darwin also recognize the role of emotional expression in survival and adaptation so kind of he is also talking about how emotional expression is important in our survival as well as adapting to the different circumstances so kind of indirectly talking about this whole concept of emotional intelligence and its role in our survival and adaptation however the concept of emotional intelligence as we know it today developed in the 20th century uh, edward thorndike who was an american psychologist uh, was one of the first person who first talked about other aspects of intelligence apart from cognitive as intelligence so he first used the term social intelligence that people could be intelligent in other ways than just processing ability people can be intelligent in so many ways so one aspect of intelligence is social intelligence people could be intelligent in social situations so that also kind of includes aspect of emotional intelligence in 1920s uh, basically social intelligence according to him referred to the ability to understand and manage people and act wisely in human relationship 
So, in the relationship context, how a, you act wisely, so that reflects your social intelligence. So, Thorndike was the one of the first person in that uh, kind of 20th century where he talked about other dimensions of intelligence apart from just cognitive intelligence. So, that is one uh, important thing. David Wessler, who is one of the most prominent researcher in the field of intelligence, study of intelligence, he also kind of mentioned. So, one of one of the most important find uh, IQ testing in all this revolution of IQ testing, where David Wessler is one of the prominent name that comes into the IQ testing. He also kind of recognized uh, the importance of emotional factors when uh, talking about uh, intelligence, but obviously it was not uh, kind of prop formally introduced in the theories. Uh, he suggested emotional and social intelligence should be included in a complete measurement of general intelligence. So, when we uh, kind of measure intelligence, uh, emotional and social intelligence should also be included. However, these factors were not included in the IQ tests, um, even, even till now also most of these factors are not included, but some of it is, is uh, people are kind of focusing on. <coughs> now, another landmark kind of uh, uh, theory that came where, where emotional intelligence uh, kind of focused on was uh, Howard Gardiner in 1983, he proposed a theory of multiple intelligence, where he said that human intelligence is not one dimensional. It is not just about processing information or logical analysis, this is one part of it. There can be other diverse multiple intelligences. People could be intelligent in social situations, so there can be social intelligence. People could be intelligent in let us say music, people could be intelligent in sports. So, there can be multiple intelligences people have and just talking about one type of intelligence as one uh, know, uh, is kind of not kind of uh, it does not give the justification in terms of or justice to the whole concept of uh, emotional or ho whole concept of intelligence. So, there can be diverse multiple intelligences human beings have. Uh, he kind of talked about eight kind of intelligences in that there are two intelligence he talked about which are directly connected to emotional intelligence. So, he talked about intrapersonal intelligence and interpersonal intelligence uh, uh, that kind of directly connected to the concept of emotional intelligence. So, according to Gardner, interpersonal intelligence is about one's ability to understand thoughts, motivations, <coughs> desires of others and to work effectively with them. So, how well you understand other people in terms of their uh, motivations, their desires, their thoughts and kind of using this understanding to work effectively with other people. So, that is called interpersonal intelligence, intelligence about other people. Then another intelligence is called intrapersonal intelligence, which involves understanding oneself, having an effective model of oneself that includes desires, fears, abilities and using this information to regulate one's own life. So, it is about how well you understand yourself, your own desires, your own fears, your own insecurities, your own abilities and uh, regulate those and kind of properly direct them to kind of uh, uh, kind of you know uh, properly use them in your own life. So, that is intrapersonal intelligence and these two kind of factors actually is emotional intelligence. If you see all the definition of emotional intelligence, they are talking about only these two aspects how well you are able to understand other and your own self in terms of emotional expression, understanding, regulation, yourself as uh, others. So, that kind of these two intelligences can collectively called as emotional intelligence. So, Gardner was the first person who talked about these different diverse intelligences and in that uh, two aspects are kind of very specifically connected to emotional intelligence. Obviously, then uh, also the phrase emotional quotient like uh, intelligence questions IQ, EQ term was also coined by uh, Baron, uh, Reuven Baron <coughs> in 80s. Uh, the emotional intelligence test developed by uh, Baron is commonly known as uh, Baron emotional quotient inventory. So, this is a test uh, or the scale that are used to measure EQ according to the theory of Baron. So, because there are different perspectives. So, this is one perspective which measures emotional intelligence using this questionnaire. 
the term emotional intelligence again as we have already said was formally introduced by um, Selovi and Mayer in 1980. And they also developed another test which is called as uh, Mayer Selovi Caruso emotional intelligence test. So, these three individuals developed this. So, that is why this is the name is based on their name uh, uh, which is an ability based test rather than uh, kind of uh, self reporting. So, it measures various emotional abilities. So, this is another test from another perspective. Uh, then obviously, Daniel Goldman we said uh, he popularized this whole concept of EI through his best seller book then kind of uh, the rest is kind of we all know mm, a lot of research has come into the place. So, this is a kind of brief historical account how this whole concept evolved and how it is the way it is in today's world in the today's scenario. So, why emotional intelligence is so important? Why should we even study them or understand it, this concept or apply this concept in our life? Why it matters? So, let us see some of the findings uh, and why it is so important. So, there is a growing body of uh, research that shows that why emotional intelligence is very important both in personal and professional life. Some of the findings are like this, you know, J lot of studies shows that, you know, emotional intelligence predicts better job performance. Study by consulting firm Talent Smart also found that people with higher emotional intelligence tended to be more successful in their career. This is a kind of a general trend for a lot of people it that people especially with higher emotional intelligence that tend to succeed more in uh, career. So, when we talk about careers it is not just about how you intellectually perform, it is also about how you relate with other people and so on, your teamwork ability, your leadership ability, so many other aspects that could be actually directly connected to emotional intelligence. So, in that sense career prospects and success could also be connected to emotional intelligence. So, in fact, emotional intelligence was a better predictor of job performance than IQ or a technical skills in some studies found, even it is a better predictor than IQ itself. Uh, in certain job situations, probably it is more important than IQ. Uh, improved leadership, some of the research shows that leaders with high emotional intelligence are more effective at motivating and inspiring their teams, building trust and creating a positive work environment. One study found that emotional intelligence was a key factor in the success of top perform, performing CEOs. So, people who are in the leadership positions, uh, there um, seems to be uh, more likely to succeed if they have higher emotional intelligence, because they are, their main role is to connect with people and how they manage the conflicts and relationships and so on, motivate other people. Their emotional intelligence plays a very important role if they themselves are not able to manage their own emotion, regulate their emotion, how can they manage other people. So, leadership is one thing where emotional intelligence can play a very important role and lot of research finding actually supports that. Enhanced social relationship uh, also is connected to uh, emotional intelligence. People with higher emotional intelligence tend to have stronger and more meaningful relationship in both personal and professional life. So, that is something also very clearly understandable because relationship is about lot of it about, about about emotions. How do you connect with people in terms of emotions? So, for example, in one of the study uh, of University of Maryland found that emotional intelligence was positively correlated with relationship satisfaction and intimacy. So, in the different aspects of relationship, emotional intelligence, people with higher emotional intelligence, they seems to have more less conflict in their relationship and more harmonious relationship. EQ has also been found to be uh, associated with better mental health. So, emotional intelligence can also have a positive impact on mental health. Uh, study, uh, one of the study by uh, University of California found that people with high emotional intelligence were better able to manage stress and cope with negative emotions. They also reported lower anxiety and depression. So, various indicators of mental health uh, seems to be you know connected to emotional intelligence. So, people with higher emotional intelligence there seems to because a lot of this mental health issues are related to emotions only. So, if one is able to regulate emotions properly understand emotions, there is less chance chances of having emo disorder in the emo emotional disorders. So, in that sense they will kind of have a better mental health and they are likely to have better mental health at least research shows that. Connected to mental health is obviously another aspect is well-being, which is another aspect of mental health. So, research has shown that emotional intelligence is li linked to greater well-being and satisfaction of life. People are also 
report the greater well-being in their life, more satisfaction and happiness in their life. For example, a study in the University of Zurich found that people with higher emotional intelligence reported higher levels of happiness, self-esteem and overall life satisfaction. So, these are different findings which shows that you know emotional intelligence could play a very important role in different spheres of human life. So, this concept is very important in terms of applications and quality or enhancing quality of our life. In terms of adaptation with different aspect of life, emotional intelligence has also been linked to various indicators of successful adaptation across different areas of life. So, for instance, uh, studies have found higher level of emotional intelligence are associated with different aspects like greater life satisfaction, better health outcomes as measured both objectively and subjectively, health in terms of uh, even physical health also, increased social support. People with higher intelligence, emotional intelligence are more likely to have higher social support because if they have more harmonious relationship with other, they are likely to support them more. Improved quality of social and marital relationship, enhance academic and work performance. So, these are some of the research findings which shows the different arenas of life it could be directly connected. According to a review published in Annual Review of Psychology in 2008 uh, by Mayers, Roberts and uh, Barsett, they kind of summarize lot of existing findings and shows that how it could be connected to different aspects of human life. One is in, co in the context of children and teenagers. Emotional intelligence was a was positively associated with favorable social interactions and relationship. So, even in children and teenage groups they found uh, emotional intelligence was positively related to good relationships and social interactions and negatively associated with uh, going against social norms and antisocial behaviors. So, it was less connected people uh, the children and uh, teenager who have higher emotional intelligence they had better relationships and social interaction and less of uh, behaving against social norms or antisocial behavior. It could be including things like crime and so on. So, this was reported in children uh, by the children, their families, teachers both in and out of schools. So, data were collected from multiple of people associated with those sample. Another finding they found that you know emotional intelligence was better social relationship for adults also. Individuals with higher emotional intelligence have better performance perceptions of their own social abilities and experience more success in their interpersonal relationships. Additionally, they exhibit less inter, uh, interpersonal aggression and encounter fear problems in their relationships. So, overall there was more harmonious relationship for adults also as well as in the children and teenage also. Third finding they also kind of summarize from the review is that emotional intelligence is linked with academic success as reported by teachers but not necessarily higher grades when IQ is taking into account. So, but it was related to academic performance and success, uh, not necessarily it directly translate into higher grades, especially when IQ is taken into account. So, some aspect of academic performance is also connected to emotional intelligence. Fourth is individuals with higher emotional intelligence have better social dynamics and negotiating skill in the workplace more negotiating skills and uh, better social dynamics have also been reported uh, uh, or associated with uh, higher intelligence, higher emotional intelligence. Fifth is individuals with higher emotional intelligence also have better well-being including higher life satisfaction, self-esteem and lower levels of insecurity, depression, poor health choices. So, this is a review a summary of the review that was done from different studies already existing studies and these are some of the summary of the findings. So, it shows very clearly that uh, it has many positive impact in different spheres of human life. So, overall the research suggests emotional intelligence matters because it can lead to greater success, better relationship, improved mental health and increased well-being. So, by developing emotional intelligence skills, we can enhance our personal and professional lives in a meaningful way. So, it is very important concepts and very strongly connected to the quality of our life. So, that is why it, it matters. So, we will see now briefly about some of the models of emotional intelligence. As we have already seen, people have defined emotional intelligence little bit different ways and based on their definition, they propose different models. So, this model basically is derived from how they defined it. So, the development of various emotional intelligence model has been influenced by var varying definitions proposed by major theorists. Because 
but different theories defined it in different ways obviously the core idea was same but kind of uh, how they approached it was a different and based on that different models of emotional intelligence kind of came into the picture if you see all these models there are three major types of models one is called ability model another is called mixed model and third is called trait model so these are the three categories of models of emotional intelligence where emotional intelligence are conceptualized in different ways one is as an ability another is as a trait and third is as a mixed model of mixed concept of ability and trait so let us see these three models separately so ability model of emotional intelligence uh, this is uh, proposed by mayer and selobi in 1990 uh, basically uh, if you see uh, if you uh, what we have discussed that mayer and selobi were the person who first used this term called emotional intelligence and uh, they defined emotional intelligence more as an ability of people it's an ability that can be kind of developed that people have uh, ability either high ability or low ability and that can be kind of de developed so it's a kind of learned skills so Mayer and Selobi proposed an ability model of emotional intelligence based on what how they defined it. So it consists of according to this model it consists of four categories of mental abilities or four abilities that are related to emotional intelligence and uh, from very simple to complex abilities. So we may have different abilities for emotions emotionally uh, kind of understanding or regulating emotions from simple to very complex abilities and uh, they said there are four abilities that are included in the emotional intelligence so these four abilities are perceiving appraising and expressing emotions so one ability is how are you able to perceive appraise means kind of interpret and express emotion second ability is using emotion to facilitate thinking how are you able to use emotions to facilitate your thought processes and creativity and so on kind of channelizing emotions to thought processes because emotions are will influence your thoughts but how are you able to use those emotions so that's an another ability third is understanding and analyzing emotions to what extent you are able to understand emotions in yourself and as well as others and analyze them fourth one is regulating emotion through reflections how are you able to regulate emotions so that's very important because we all experience emotion but very uh, people differ in their ability to regulate them some people just bust out whatever emotion they have some people can control it and channelize it properly so that ability is called regulating emotions so this ability is uh, actually ranging from basic to advanced so if you see from 1 to 4 it is kind of ranging from basic to more advanced abilities okay so these are the four abilities according to this model of mayer and selby so we'll very briefly talk about each of them now so in terms of perceiving appraising and expressing emotions uh, they uh, defined uh, perception appraisal and expression emotional dimension as the ability to recognize and distinguish emotions of oneself and in others so you are able to how are you able to recognize emotions in yourself as well as kind of um, even in other people and uh, distinguish emotions you know kind of different emotions so we can kind of experience diverse emotions some emotions are very subtle so are you able to distinguish them and kind of understand different emotions so so that is about perceiving you know in terms of perception how are you able to do that appraising and expressing emotions so this process starts with the ability to identify one's own emotion through bodily sensation internal feelings and thoughts are you able to kind of sense your own emotions through your bodily sensations because every emotion will have some specific sensations in the body itself so when you are fearful there will be sensation in the stomach and so on so from those sensation signals can you understand the what kind of emotions you are going through your internal feelings and thoughts identification is very important in this concept so once you want you kind of uh, learned once an individual has learned to generalize emotion based on one personal experiences they can begin to identify emotions of others so it is always like that if you can understand your own emotions you can understand others also if you cannot understand yourself you cannot understand others so all learning happens from the one cells first and then it can be generalized to other so this leads to the ability to express emotion appropriately in response to the cues of the environment so then 
based on the understanding one can appropriately express so expression is also very important according to the context how are you expressing your emotions so this is about one ability of perceiving appraising and expressing emotions people can differ in it and it based on uh, first understanding yourself and then it can be generalized to other people so another aspects also individual uh, for kind of uh, with developed emotional intelligence can also differentiate between genuine and false expression of emotion as well as recognize the accuracy of others emotion so it's a kind of skills that some people slowly slowly learn and at the highest level people can understand what is a false expression and what is a genuine expression you know uh, whether the expression is accurate and so on so all the subtle subtleties one can understand as people kind of uh, have more of these skills and enhance those skills now using emotion to facilitate thinking is very important because we have a whole module devoted to understanding the relationship between cognition and emotions so thought processes are directly can influence emotion and emotion can influence thought processes so they are very interlinked with each other uh, so emotion can be a powerful tool in terms of it can facilitate your thought processes your creativity uh, and also it can kind of hinder your thought processes so how can you use those emotion for facilitating thought process is an ability is an ability according to this model so it involves uh, how emotion can aid in thinking process such as reasoning problem solving and communication so at the basic level individuals prioritize their thinking by using emotions to focus on important information in their environment so emotion gives a signal about the info information about the environment that you understand no if you experience fear, fear that means there is something dangerous here so it gives a signal and a kind of understanding that is also very important as they develop emotional intelligence they can generalize vivid emotion to aid in judgment and memory processes because emotions can help you to kind of kind of enhance memories and thought processes so it triggers memories according to emotions we have already seen lot of findings where shows according to the kind of emotions we experience congruent to emotions we experience thought processes you know kind of similar thing uh, comes into the memories if you are happy more positive things will come to your memory so emotion can kind of trigger thought processes congruent thought processes uh, and uh, that can also aid in the process of uh, decision making and so on so they will uh, deeply feel manipulate examine uh, the generated emotion to plan or make decisions so they can use those emotion for making uh, decisions and planning eventually they can uh, think from multiple perspective by using emotional mood swings so emotions using emotions you get they can have a multiple perspective also so emotional in, in, in intelligent uh, individuals tend to be more flexible in the construction plan as they utilize their ability to shift thinking styles and mood swings at the highest level of emotional facilitation of thinking is the ability to recognize reasoning induced by emotions for example happiness facilitates creative uh, thinking or inductive reasoning while sadness can facilitate deductive reasoning so the, your mood can influence the different kind of thought processes and style of processing i think we have in detail discussed all these things earlier also that uh, positive emotions can enhance your creativity it kind of opens up and you know kind of you know uh, gives more flexibility in thinking processes sadness can also facilitate certain kind of thinking particularly you know more deeper thinking can also be stimulated by sadness and so on so using diverse emotions to facilitate thinking is also a skill according to this model third ability that is mentioned in the model is understanding and analyzing emotions so this is uh, kind of clear cut in a sense how you understand to what level to what extent you understand different emotions distinguish them among them analyze their impact and so on so fundamental aspect of this dimension is the ability to label emotions and recognize similarities and differences in between them so that is something very important understanding subtle emotions how one is different from other how they are influencing you so kind of becoming more sensitive to the emotions for example joy is an emotion uh, of great happiness while sadness is an emotion that makes us cry and withdraw from the surrounding every emotion will have certain motivational tendency or behavioral tendencies so you can understand you know how emotions can influence your behavior also the next level involves interpreting the emotion to its origin such as how sadness can be accompanied by loss happiness can be accompanied by gain so kind of understanding this whole context is also important 
individual who has mastered this level can understand complex and blended emotions. Sometimes we experience multiple emotions one after the other or sometimes emotions are mixed up together depending on the situations. So, those also can be a complex understanding can also come into the play. Uh, finally, a person with high level of understanding and analyzing emotion can recognize transition between emotions, how one emotion changes into another emotions. Sometimes you can experience for example, anger when you experience shame or you can experience anger when you experience injustice. So, there can be complex blend of emotions in different situation or transition of emotions according to the context. So, all this you know diverse understanding could come into the play, the more you understand about all these things more emotionally intelligent one can become. The last one is regulating emotion through reflection. So, that is most important even if you understand everything and you are not able to regulate emotion then uh, the your behavior will not be reflected as an emotionally intelligent behavior. So, everything actually comes down the regulation of emotions and I think emotion regulation this whole one module we have discussed how important it is and some specific techniques also we have discussed in the last module was about regulating emotions. So, this is a very important uh, aspects of emotional intelligence and uh, effective re regulation can help individuals in planning processes, people uh, can uh, enhance this ability. So, that was kind of we have already discussed in the last module, this is a learned uh, one can learn this skill, skills also and there can be individual differences also, some people are better in terms of regulating emotions. So, managing their emotions effectively by enhancing positive emotions and moderating negative emotions. So, ultimately regulating emotion one of the central aspect is that you know negative emotion should be decreased and uh, more positive emotions should be expressed. So, that is the gist of it and uh, more one can do that better regulation of emotion one has. So, these are some of the abilities according to the Mayer and Celebes model. So, this model is about ability model. So, these are all learned skills one can learn them. So, that is why this is an ability model, these are abilities that one can enhance by understanding and practicing. So, Mayer and Selobi uh, also kind of they developed and test whether you how much of it you have it. So, you can one can use this test, this is called as Mayer Selobi and Karsu emotional intelligence test. So, this test measures these four abilities that we have discussed and one can find out their scores in that to what extent you have of this skills that we have talked about. So, this ability model of emotional intelligence is considered one of the most prominent and popular model because it enhances abilities that can be learned. Whereas, some other model like trait model they say it is more like of a personality trait which is there in you already and some people have higher in it, some people are lower in it. So, trait model we will talk about later. So, uh, so they have a specific uh, scale or test that is MSCEIT test which can be used to understand one can get a score of all these abilities and can see their to what extent they have these abilities. The next model is called as a trait model of emotional intelligence. So, trait model as the name suggests means it is a personality trait. So, they are not talking in terms of abilities that one can learn and more of it, they are more talking in terms of that is an individual differences. Some people are high in it, some people are low in it. So, Petrits uh, is uh, one of the researcher who basically uh, favored this trait model of emotional intelligence and uh, he said that it should be distinguished from the ability model. So, trait model of emotional intelligence basically presents an alternative perspective of the ability model. So, it is a different alternative perspective uh, uh, positing that emotional intelligence cannot be considered just kind of genuine intelligence like I, uh, uh, cognitive intelligence since emotions are subjective in nature and cannot be objectively measured as a skill. So, their argument is that emotion is very transitory thing, they do not kind of stay for a longer time unlike cognitive intelligence which is more permanent kind of thing. So, they said it cannot be measured just as a skill you know it keeps changing. So, it is kind of you know uh, can be looked at as a more like a trait or under personality people differ in it. So, that was their argument in that sense. So, this model asserts the trait uh, emotional intelligence situated within the personality framework. So, people have different personalities and it could be kind of considered in that whole hierarchy of the traits of people have. So, among all the other personality traits one can have this emotional intelligence aspect of trait embedded in the trait itself. So, 
consists of constellation of emotional self perception located at the lower level of personality hierarchies. So, basically they are talking about it should be considered more of a personality trait where individual differs in it, you know this is kind of inbuilt in that individual. So, they use the term trait emotional self efficacy, you know so, as Petrides terms it denotes as an individual's own perception of their ability to handle their emotions is there how you perceive your ability to handle emotions. So, that is the trait or trait emotional self efficacy. So, according to this view there is no definite profile of emotional intelligence person with a specific characteristics since particular trait can be advantageous in some circumstances and can be detrimental to others. So, some traits could be important significant in one context and may not be significant in another context. For example, they are saying introversion. Uh, uh, may be beneficial in one in certain research uh, certain uh, career such as research oriented job that necessitates isolation and may be disadvantageous in some other services such as customer services where social interactions are required. So, some trade could be advantageous in some say, some situation some co context and may not be advantageous in other context. So, situation to situation profile one profile could be advantageous another could not be may not be advantageous. The trait model of emotional intelligence highlights specific personality traits that facilitates the perception and regulation of emotions. So, they kind of list specific traits which are which underscore the importance of emotional self perception so which could be connected to emotional intelligence. So, Petrides uh, model uh, talks about uh, four dimensions and each of these dimension may have further facets. So, there are four dimension and the sub facets including uh, kind of makes it 15 facets. So, the four dimensions of emotional intelligence according to this model is one is well being. So, it includes people with high of this trait are people with emotional resilience, self esteem they have high self esteem and life satisfaction. Individuals high in well being are able to cope with stress and negative emotions effectively and experience a sense of self worth and fulfillment. So, this is a trait of people with high emotional intelligence. If they have, they have in that sense, they have high emotional resilience, they have higher self esteem, higher life satisfaction, and ability to cope with the uh, stresses and demands of life. So, this is one aspect called well being. Another aspect is called self control. Uh, dimension of related to emotional intelligence. So, emotionally regulation it includes ability to regulate emotions, how imp uh, low impulsivity people with uh, higher self control are their low on impulsivities, they are not impulsive they kind of control and think before doing something. Uh, their adaptability is very high, individuals high in self control are able to regulate their own emotions and impulses and are adaptable to changing situations. So, their ability to control themselves regulation self regulation part is uh, much higher. So, this is the second dimension. Fourth dimension is emotionality. It includes uh, qualities or traits such as empathy, emotional perceptions, expressions, individual high in emotionality are able to recognize and understand emotion in themselves and others and can express their emotions in appropriate ways. So, this is very similar to what uh, some uh, the some of the dimensions of Mayer's model, but he is more considering it as a trait kind of thing. So, emotionality dimension and the fourth dimension is socia sociability. It is more about social competence, assertiveness, communication skills. So, this is skills that are related to connecting with other people or the social context more related to social intelligence. Individuals high in sociability are able to navigate social situations effectively, communicate their needs and opinions assertively and establish positive relationship with others. So, these are the four important dimensions or traits according to uh, this model trait model and uh, he also said each of these dimensions have further sub dimensions or facets like this, this is the model that is showing for example. <coughs> Self control will have stress management, impulse control, emotion regulation, well being will have trait happiness, trait optimism, self esteem, uh, sociability will have social awareness, assertiveness, emotion management, emotionality will have trait empathy, emotional perception, 
emotional expression relationships apart from that they also have adaptability self motivation so these are on in total there are 15 facets composed by these four dimensions so these are the uh, facets and how their definitions are given here uh, one can kind of uh, it will be there in the handouts so you can read about them in more details so these are 15 facets and all this actually comes from these four dimensions so the 15 facets of trait emotional intelligence describe specific aspects of emotional intelligence that contribute to four dimensions for example we have already discussed it emotional awareness and emotional self control are facets contribute to the self control dimension so these are part of self control it has many other sub facet like this uh, 15 facets were derived from it so overall the uh, model of trait emotional intelligence proposed by petrite suggest emotional intelligence is a cons complex construct that involves multiple facets and dimensions and that these facets and dimension can be measured through self report measures such as so he also developed a separate scales and questionnaire to measure uh, all this dimension that is proposed in the model so those who have proposed a theory they also develop their own ways of measuring it so the scale that was developed is called teiq so that is the questionnaire uh, this is called a straight emotional intelligence questionnaire and this can be used to measure all these scores of all these dimensions of emotional intelligence so uh, uh, so this is about trait emotional intelligence so if you see most of these core ideas are same but the thing is the specific details are different and the approach how it was conceptualized was different the last model is called as a mixed model of emotional intelligence and uh, there there are two theories that comes under this model one is called baron model and another is called as goldman's model so these two two theories actually model comes under mixed model why mixed model because they conceptualize emotional intelligence as a mix of trait as well as abilities so some aspects of emotional intelligence are trait like like these are like inbuilt in the person and some are more like ability which can be trained and developed so in this comes two model one is baron's model so baron model uh, model of emotional intelligence is one of the earliest and most widely cited model it is one of the most earliest model proposed actually in 80s this is a mixed model because it includes both ability and trace based aspects so according to this model uh, emotional intelligence consists of 15 sub traits that can be grouped as five main areas of domains so here they are talking about five domains and then there are sub domains which totally makes 15 facets or 15 uh, kind of sub traits or sub aspects so these five traits are intrapersonal domain as we have already says intrapersonal is more about your self awareness how well you know about yourself your emotions your insecurities your fears and so on so that is one domain your own uh, awareness assertiveness self regard and so on understanding your own emotions needs and strengths interpersonal is about how your understanding about others emotions this domain include empathy social responsibility interpersonal relationships it involves understanding the emotions and needs of others and being able to establish maintain positive relationships so this is more about relationship context how you are able to deal with other people and understand others so intrapersonal domain interpersonal domain third is adaptability domain so how one is able to adapt to different circumstances of life like it includes flexibility problem solving reality testing it involves being able to adapt to changing situations solve problems and so on ability to adapt to different life circumstances and demands of life fourth one is stress management and domain this includes stress tolerance impulse control how are you able to tolerate the stresses of life different demands of life and able to control your impulses it involves being able to manage one's own emotions reactions and cope effectively with different stressful circumstances of life the fourth one is general mood domain uh, this includes uh, happiness and optimism what is your general mood are you able to kind of experience happiness and uh, optimis optimism in your life it involves having positive outlook of life and being able to maintain a sense of well-being even in difficult circumstances so even in difficult circumstances if you generally able to maintain happiness and positive outlook in your life then it is kind of you are scoring more on this domain 
So, these are 5 domains. Uh, in this intra and interpersonal domains according to this model falls under trait based aspect of emotional intelligence as they focus on more of a personal characteristics. So, these are more trait like characteristics intra and interpersonal domain that are discussed uh, <coughs> like uh, know assertiveness, empathy, social responsibilities kind of personal characteristics which are trait like according to this model. Other domains such as adaptability, stress management, general mood falls under ability based aspect of the emotional intelligence. These aspects generally fall under ability kind of things. This is kind of developed with the passage of time. So, this model emphasizes an abilities to adapt to changing circumstances and so on. So, that is why this is considered as a mixed model of emotional intelligence. So, overall this model uh, of emotional intelligence Baron model uh, considers both personality traits and abilities as important component of emotional intelligence. Uh, this also model has one assessment scale, every model has their own scales. So, this, this actually this whole emotional question was this EQ thing was developed under this model. Uh, they also have a scale to measure emotional question or EQ which provides an overall measure of emotional intelligence. So, this Baron models emphasize the importance of emotional and social skills in personal and professional life and it can be su suggest that it can be developed and improved also because it is a mixed model. So, this is also one of the widely used model. The last one is Goldman's model who kind of popularized this whole concept of emotional intelligence through his book emotional intelligence why it can matter more than IQ. Uh, Goldman model is also a very popular model and uh, it is kind of uh, cited by uh, most, most of the researchers. So, this model actually uh, talks about 5 domains of emotional intelligence, so, there are 5 aspects of emotional intelligence. One is self awareness. So, this is about ability to recognize and understand one's own emotions. So, how aware yourself about yourself it's more like intrapersonal intelligence so self awareness second is self regulation so it's about ability to manage and control your emotion ability to delay gratification manage stress control impulses so ability to control emotions third is motivation uh, this domain involves ability to channel emotions towards achieving goals how you are able to use emotions to achieve goals and motivate yourself so, that is called motivation part of it. It includes ability to persist in the pursuit of goal and to bounce back from setbacks. So, this how emotion influences motivation and we are able to channelize that. Fourth is empathy. This domain includes the ability to recognize and understand emotions of others uh, to respond them in appropriate ways. Empathy is ability to understand others perspective, putting yourself in the shoes of others looking world through them and understand how they are looking at world. So, that you can connect with other people and understand their issue, their kind of perspective. Uh, that involves ability to connect with others and build positive relationships. Last one is social skills. Uh, this domains includes ability to communicate effectively, resolve conflict, build and maintain social relationships and so on. So, uh, this model talks about these 5 domains. Uh, Initially, this model had 5 domains, uh, later they uh, made it 4 domains, we will talk about that. So, in the Goldman models, this self awareness and self regulation components are considered more like a trait as they reflect an individual dispositions and habitual ways of thinking and behaving. Motivation, empathy and social skills are considered more like an ability like things as they involve specific skills and competencies that can be developed and improved. So, that is why it is a mixed model because this uh, out of this uh, 5 traits, 5 characteristics self awareness and self regulations are more trait like motivation, empathy and social skills are more ability like uh, characteristics. So, original model uh, Goldman model had this 5 dimensions that we talked about later work he made it more crisp where they kind of he kind of made uh, kind of reorganize this 5 dimension into 4 and that included self awareness, self regulation, these were already there, social awareness was also there 
and the fourth one is relationship management. So, empathy kind of clubbed into that. So, these four dimensions are uh, kind of uh, included under emotional intelligence. So, if you see how this four dimension came into the picture, uh, basically Goldman used this two by two model where you know, so emotional intelligence talks about your understanding yourself and others. So, there are two aspects to it, self and other and in the, in the concept of emotions, one is about ability to recognize and regulate emotion, recognition of emotion, regulation of emotion and within yourself, within the other. So, these four uh, uh, aspects kind of interact to give these four dimensions. So, when you are able to recognize yourself, so there is a recognition, your ability to recognize yourself that leads to self-awareness. So, it comes by the interaction of recognition and self. So, if you are able to recognize yourself, understand yourself, so that is self-awareness. It includes things like emotional self-awareness, accurate self-assessment, self-confidence. Some of this we will talk about in other lectures. So, these dimensions of self-awareness came from self and recognition. From other recognitions, it comes social awareness. When you are able to recognize others' emotions, understand others' emotions, that is called social awareness. It includes things like empathy, social orientation, service orientation, organizational awareness and so on. Then comes when regulation of self, you are able to regulate yourself, that comes self-management or self-regulation, same thing. This is, this includes things like self-control, trustworthiness, conscientiousness and so on. When you are able to regulate others, regulation and other, it becomes relationship management. You are able to control the dynamics of your relationship with other. So, it includes things like communication, conflict management, teamwork and collaboration. So, these are the four dimensions of which are kind of important aspect of emotion uh, intelligence, which comes from this two by two model, you know. And uh, mo uh, this is one of the most popular and most of the people actually kind of use this model uh, to conceptualize emotional intelligence. So, basically these are the two sides, this is the same model we are talking about. So, one aspect is intrapersonal intelligence and another is interpersonal intelligence in the Goldman's model, so if you see intrapersonal intelligence includes self awareness and self management interpersonal includes other awareness or kind of social awareness and relationship management you know and these four are kind of connected to each other in some sense because one leads to other self awareness can lead to other awareness so if you would, your own awareness is directly proportional to others awareness also because the more you understand yourself you can understand others because the dynamics are very similar this is how people experience so your self awareness can lead to other awareness other awareness can lead to relationship management the more you understand others your relationship management will be better you know so it's kind of proportional similarly self awareness can lead to self regulation the more you understand yourself more you will be able to regulate yourself control yourself Similarly, self-management can also lead to relationship management. More you are able to manage yourself can lead to better relationship management. Most of the problems in conflicts in relationship happen because you are not able to control yourself. So, if for example, if you are all the time expressing anger and uh, you know tantrums in relationship means you are not able to manage yourself. So, it will impact the relationship with other people. So, self-management leads to relationship management. So, these are all connected to each other. So, overall if you see all these models some of the core ideas are very same, some of the only de only so details are different. Although there are different models, approaches are kind of different in terms of all these models, but the core ideas still remain same that emotional intelligence is talks about intrapersonal intelligence and interpersonal intelligence. It is about understanding yourself and others in terms of emotional understanding and expression of emotion and regulation of emotion. All this model actually somehow talks about these things only, some details are different. And uh, this very clearly kind of summarized in the Goldman's model and how each of these are importantly connected to each other. So, uh, so this is about uh, kind of brief introduction of emotional intelligence and uh, in the remaining modules and lectures, we will be talking about different aspect of uh, emotional intelligence. Each each aspects will have one one separate lectures and then we will talk about some 
applied aspects of emotional intelligence. So, the remaining modules is actually is about emotional intelligence only. So, with this I will stop here. Thank you.